Hi, my name is Rob Earlham, Senior Developer Advocate here at Sitecore. And this is the next video in a series taking a look at Sitecore Search. We recently implemented Search on Sitecore's developer portal. And in this series, we're going to be going through the different tasks we did on that project. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can configure your different index sources. We're going to take a look at connectors, triggers, and document extractors, and see how all those three things come together. So let's dive in. Okay, so when you're configuring your index sources, there's three main elements you're gonna be working with. The first, the connector, and this will define the way you're gonna get your data from the source. The connector will then have one or more triggers, and these define where in the target source you're gonna point your connector that we just created. The triggers are responsible for finding all the different documents that to be extracted. Finally, the documents found by the triggers are then passed to a series of document extractors. A document extractor is responsible for taking one or more documents returned by the trigger and mapping its data to the attributes defined for the domain, which we looked at in a previous video. Okay, so this is a little bit abstract. Let's take a look at what a simple setup might look like. If we look at this example, here we're using an API crawler as the source we're looking at provides an easy to use API to pull the data that we need. There isn't too much data we're indexing, so we can actually get it all down in a single request trigger. This is configured to make a single GET request, which is then gonna return all of the data we need. The data being returned is also well managed and in a consistent structure. So that means we can use a single JavaScript extractor to match the returned objects to our attribute model. Now, something like this is an ideal world scenario for an index source. Obviously though, you're not always gonna be this lucky. Sometimes you're gonna to have to configure something a little more complex. So how would that look? Well, in this example, there isn't an API provided for us, so we're going to have to use a web crawler to look over our website and find the different pages we want to index. So we have a couple of different triggers configured. There's a sitemap configured for some of the data, but not for all of it. And for that reason, we've also configured a request trigger as well. The documents being returned also aren't in a consistent format. For this reason, we need to configure a different set of document extractors for each different data format that we're dealing with at the source. So before we go ahead and take a look at how the different sources for the developer portal have been configured, I wanted to just walk quickly through the different types of connectors, triggers, and document extractors that are available to you. So there's four different types of connectors available. The first two are very similar, and they're the web crawler and the web crawler advanced. These are designed, as the name suggests, for crawling websites. The next connector is the API connector. This is designed to make REST requests to an endpoint that returns the data needed. The final connector is the push connector. This is quite different from the first three as they all work on a pull model where Cycle Search pulls the data from those sources. The push connector, as the name suggests, relies on a third party system pushing data into search. Okay, so that's the list of connectors available to you. Next up, let's take a look at the triggers. There's a variety of triggers available, but what you can use depends on which connector you've selected. They're not all available for all connectors. The first one we have are the sitemap and sitemap index triggers. These are designed to either read sitemap or sitemap index documents. Obviously, you can only use this when using the web crawler though, as it's very web specific. Next up, we have the JavaScript trigger. With this trigger, you can write JavaScript to build an array of URLs to be used. This can be useful when you need to add a bit of logic to the list of URLs. We also have an RSS trigger. Much like the sitemap trigger, this one's super easy to configure. You just point it to the RSS location for the site being indexed, and that source will be used to build out the list of documents. The final one we have is the request trigger. This triggers where you need to go and actually physically crawl a website source. Here you provide the URL to the top level page in the site, typically the home page. The connector will then go and download the markup for that page, find any anchors in it, and follow those anchors through the site. You can configure how deep you want this to go as well, making sure you get all the documents that you need. So once we have our triggers configured, you then need to set up your document extractors to take the data returned and match it to your attribute model. Just like with triggers, the document extractors you can choose depend on which connector you've selected. The first one we have is the XPath connector. This is used with web crawlers and allows you to map attributes to XPath queries made against the target document's DOM. Next up is the CSS extractor, another one only available for web crawlers. Instead of using XPath, this time you're gonna use a CSS selector, again, to pull out elements from the DOM. 
The JavaScript extractor is available for all connectors. This is helpful when you need to do some logic to pass the data that's been returned. And it returns a JavaScript object with each of the properties in that object matching the attributes you define for your domain. The final one we have is the JSON path. Now this one is only available for the API crawler and it's used to allow you to match individual attributes you defined to a specific JSON path within the API response. Okay, so I think we've kind of covered enough theory for now. Let's take a look at some of the index sources we've configured for the developer portal so you can see some of this in action. Okay, so I've loaded up the back end of Sitecore Search called the Customer Engagement Center, or CEC. And I've gone and selected my Sources menu on the left. And here you can see all of the different sources we have configured for the development portal. You can see the top one we're still working on, and the rest of them are all actually live now. So I'm going to start by looking at a really simple one, and that's the dev portal itself. This is built using the Web Crawler Advanced, and it's using a sitemap trigger. We have one sitemap on the dev portal that covers all of the content on there. So this is really easy for us to index. We just point it to that sitemap location and that's our trigger complete. The document extractors are also really simple to configure. The data on the dev portal is really consistent. It's always located at the same point in the DOM for every page. So that means we can just use one document extractor for all the documents on there. You can see we have a regular expression here which is matching every page and then it fires this content block in here. As I said, we're using the JavaScript extractor here and you can see a bit of logic that we've written. This is basically just pulling out things like the image URL and getting things like the name and the description out of the DOM ready for us to use. So that's a really simple example. Let's look at a more complicated one. I'm gonna go and load up the documentation site. The doc site again is using the web crawler, but this time it's Content is split over a series of different sitemaps. So we actually have 12 different triggers here. There's a different sitemap in use on the documentation site for each product section. So you can see at the top here, we have our CDP sitemap, we have our XP sitemap, we have our Content Hub sitemap, and so on through this list. But again, they're all really simple to set up. You just set up a new trigger for each of the sitemaps we want to read. Looking at the document extractors, again, this is a little more complex. We're once more using the JavaScript extractors, but you can see we have a different extractor for different areas of the site. That's controlled again through this regular expression area here. You can see this top one here is for the personalized documentation section. If we go and expand how it works, you can see again, we're using a JavaScript extractor, adding all the logic in here to build out the object and tie it through to our attribute model. One thing to notice here is we're actually hard coding the products on the bottom line of the object here. And this is how we manage to tag each section in the doc site with the correct product. As we said, the top section is dealing with Sitecore Personalize. If we go and look at the next section down for Sitecore Connect, so you can see the field here now for product is set to Sitecore Connect instead of Sitecore Personalize. That's what's used to power the facets that you see in search on the developer portal. Let's go and take a look at an API crawler though. And I think we'll take a look at our GitHub repositories one. This is indexing all of the open source repos we have available under our Sitecore organization on GitHub. If we go down to our triggers section again, we can see we have two triggers here. There aren't too many open source repositories we have. Uh, basically, it's all covered in two pages worth of content that comes out of the GitHub API. And these are the two pages we have here. If we look at our doc extractors, once more, we're working with a JavaScript extractor. Again, this is probably gonna be the most common one you're working with because you can use it for simple objects like this where we're just pulling out data based on the repository we're working with, or you can build out more complex logic like we saw earlier. I do just wanna show you one of the non-JavaScript based extractors. And for that, I'm gonna load up the PowerShell extensions documentation. Again, this is a really simple site. Everything's under a sitemap. But when we take a look at our document extractor, we're actually using an XPath one here. So this is a slightly different approach to the JavaScript method. Here, what you do is you actually assign each attribute an XPath statement, which matches an element in the DOM. So we can see we have a really simple one here. The body of the document matches the body tag. But you can get a little more complex as well. If we take a look at the description, we're gonna find a meta tag with the name description, and then we're gonna pull out the content of that meta tag. So this is how you can drill into that DOM and find specific nodes to match certain attribute values. So that's giving you a quick overview of how index sources are configured on the developer portal. Thanks for watching this series on Sitecore Search. 
Stay tuned to Discover Cycle's YouTube channel for the next episode.